A good tree cannot bring forth wicked fruit and a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Therefore, by their fruit shall you know them. End quote. You ones who faithfully have believed your holy Bible to be written in purity from God will, by now, most undoubtedly be, at the very least, curious about how and why this sabotage of the truth has been allowed to occur. So we will tell you, it occurred that even at the time when the one known, as Moses lived, that the religious slash empire leaders became most jubilant when presented by Moses with the commandments given by God. The reason, because they became the self-appointed creators and enforcers of their interpretations of God's laws. You see, they discovered that by the careful manipulation and interpretation of these laws, such as removing any references to reincarnation from the scriptures, they then could maintain a much more effective level of control and discipline over the people they ruled. In other words, they would stand between God the Father within and the people, which left them, the people, powerless and at the mercy of these cunning and deceitful leaders. These malicious deceivers are still among you and through their greed, treachery and manipulation, they control much of your world socio-economically, politically and even geophysically, even this day. In addition to the signs to look, for in the words and deeds of others you must first also recognize the signs of the Antichrist within you. Please see the document, How to Recognize the Antichrist, Against God, within you, within this journal. Remember this, you ones who are faithful and true, with your sincere commitment to the development and trust of your Holy Spirit within, will be given the knowledge of truth and the spiritual wisdom of God and the creation in order to sustain you always in balance and service to the oneness of all. 18. You must not commit the act of slavery upon any human being of God. This means you must not demand by force and fear to control, confine, use, or manipulate another human being to do any service or work, for you, against their will, without giving them fair compensation. This also means, that you cannot buy or sell another human being, as if he slash she were a product you own. This includes your children. Babies and children are not products to be created, such as by in vitro fertilization, or given to be birthed by a surrogate mother. If a couple are unable to physically procreate, then they have a choice, they can adopt a homeless or unwanted child, or they can choose not to be parents at all. Adoption of another's unwanted or parentless child is one of the most loving and unselfish acts any competent and caring couple could do in service to God. Not all couples are or were meant to procreate. It is not punishment from God. It is the responsibility of any barren loving couple to recognize that procreation is not their function at this time. But if they desire children, then they must understand what an honor it is to accept the nurturing care of one of God's children who has no one else to love him slash her. One of the most painful and degrading terms you humans have labeled those children who are born out of wedlock is bastard, which means illegitimate according to human law. You must now know that in God's kingdom there are no bastards. These born out of wedlock children are as precious to God as any other child born with married parents. Then there have been many of you humans who have throughout history claimed superiority or inferiority because of color or race. The feeling a human has of so-called genetic superiority exists within the mind of the human who wishes to control and dominate and enslave other humans of different race or color than he is. For example, many of the Germans under the one called Hitler believed that the pure Caucasian was far superior genetically, mentally, and physically to all other races. They believed in keeping the race pure by not interbreeding with other so-called inferior races. Also, many of the so-called Jews are taught and believe that their race is chosen of God over all others and so they believe that they are superior. In America as in Europe, black or dark humans were believed inferior and were made slaves to the whites. Don't you see, the evil powers that be are creating and encouraging prejudice of others who are different than they are in culture and skin, so that they can control the perceived lesser ones. Throughout the world through your media and government policies, the seed of racial unrest, dissension and prejudice is specifically planted, nurtured and allowed to bear the bitter fruit of hatred and resentment and is thus continually perpetuated, so that you people will not become united. By keeping you separated, by creating, for you suppression of various groups, they keep you at war with one another, while they execute their plans for total domination over all of you. So, is it against the laws of God for a man and a woman of different races or colors to marry and bear children? Of course not. 
The genetic corruption of your human species occurs specifically because of the disease within the spiritually weak and corrupted beings who procreate, not because of their color. Each soul is a fragment of God. Whatever race or color of the body that the soul chooses to incarnate in makes no difference whatsoever to God. Only human falsely chooses to create and delineate features or traits of racial superiority slash inferiority. In service to the divine light of wisdom and truth of our Creator, and, and the creation we are. Samantha Lord Michael Germain Drothia. Understanding the nature of your personal responsibility. Now we will discuss the personal responsibility each of you humans has toward harmonizing with and maintaining the laws of balance given forth above. Since you have been gifted with free will and reasoning intelligence by your Creator, then so it is true that balance is a choice made by each human, not the same, as an instinct of maintenance and balance given by creation to your animal and bird kingdoms. Did God therefore make you Lord over this His creation? Yes, but not to improve this perfection, dominate, eliminate, and destroy it. He gave you a physical kingdom to experience the wondrous and beautiful varieties of life. This is a place given for you to attain spiritual perfection by learning and wisely following the laws given forth by God and creation. Also, this is a place of learning through the Divine Spirit within you how to harmonize with all of creation which you choose to experience in, including beloved Mother Earth. Unfortunately, with your free will reasoning minds you selfishly thought that to modernize and improve upon this wondrous creation, you would make this a better place for you to live upon, with total disregard to the rest of the earth, the mineral, plant and animal kingdoms. So as example, we will give honor to many of your native cultures who are known as the ancients or Indians who have existed throughout your world, throughout your planetary cycle. These ones understood, because of the richness of their spiritual growth, that they were a part of this world, but not of this world. They honored and blessed the mother who gave them beauty, food and shelter. They honored and blessed the animals which gave them food and clothing. And they honored and blessed the father, the spirit of life, which gave them their life experience. They knew, that they owned nothing, but that of the spirit of God within them. They lived in harmony and balance as a part of the whole, not the dominant part, but complementary to. This was their choice by wisely following the laws of nature given of God and creation. And so then came the ones who arrogantly felt superior to all, because they were civilized. Civilization defined, 1. A state of human society characterized by a high level of intellectual, social and cultural development. What about the development of true spiritual wisdom and perfection? Well, of course the intellectual ones judged the importance of having a carefully prepared set of religious, not necessarily spiritual, doctrines to guarantee for themselves the necessary degree of control, power and dominance over their brethren in their created civilized kingdom. The native ones were despised, called primitive and so were either forced to become civilized or be destroyed. Many of the ones who refused to surrender to the whore of the Antichrist were simply destroyed. The ones who survived were sorry to live in the spiritual poverty of modern civilization. Now, many of the survivors have retained or regained the ancient spiritual teachings of balance and are working to reclaim their spiritually starved and lost brethren within this modern civilization. So with the communion of the spirit of live within each of you, you must first wisely understand and follow the laws of balance and secondly, you must wisely know where your responsibility begins and ends within the creation upon this wondrous orb. For example, are you responsible for the instinctual nature of the wild animal, reptile, and bird kingdoms? Of course not. Are you responsible for the nature of the natural minerals, grasses, shrubs and trees? Of course not. But are you responsible to those in the animal kingdom whom you have domesticated either for food, clothing or pets? Of course you are. Is it wrong to have domesticated these animals? Not necessarily, it is just a fact that you have done so. Therefore, you are responsible for the care and personal tending of the domesticated animals, such as cows, sheep, horses, chickens, birds, cats and dogs which you possess. Is it wrong to kill an animal for food? No, but why do you kill creatures call it sport and then brag to your brothers about what a wondrous killer you are? We would call this selfish, malicious killing, do you see? There is a difference. Right now, if you have plenty of domestic animals such as cow, pigs, and sheep available for food and clothing, then why need you also kill the wild creatures?